Hello everyone. Welcome to India AI's Women in AI intera- Interaction. Today joining with us, we have Dr. Sneha Nikam. Dr. Sneha Nikam holds a rich and diverse background in public health, spanning tribal, rural and ab- urban communities across India. She has over a decade of experience in diverse pu- public health areas encompassing health informatics, quality improvement, healthcare technology, public health planning and project implementation and administration. Dr. Sneha has played a key role in the technical support units of both state and central government health departments as well as prominent a prominent CSR initiative. She currently leads the program team of maternal and child health initiatives at Vathwani Institute of Artificial Intelligence. Thank you so much Dr. Sneha for joining with us today. We are very excited for this interaction. Thank you so much, Anjali. Thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, thanks a lot. And I'm equally excited to have interaction with you today. Thank you so much. So my first question is plain and simple. Can you guide us through your AI journey and what attracted to, uh, you know, to this field? Sure, sure, Anjali. So uh, before I talk about the AI journey, I'll just give, give you a brief about, you know, how, how I entered into this world of public health and AI uh, at, at, at this level. So um, as a child, I was very fascinated about uh, the role of a doctor, you know, the role that a doctor plays in the community, how he heals our ailments and all. And probably that is one of the subtle reasons that I eventually landed up uh, ending into a medical profession. So I I decided to pursue my uh, bachelor's in uh, medicine. But when I was doing my medicine, I realized that uh, being confined to a hospital and in an OPD setting is something that is not really helping much. Because I had individuals coming to the OPD settings, having diverse ailments, and they were coming to me at the last stage. As also, there were a lot of other factors which I realized, uh, which are not completely in the reach of medicines. Like uh, in India, there's a lot of diversity with respect to the traditions, customs, cultures. So it's not really possible to heal a patient just by medicines. So with that thought in mind, I started exploring that what are the other areas which I could reach out and which I could gain expertise in and through which I'll be able to reach out to more individuals and provide service to more individuals. So that is when I learned about public health as a profession. Uh, thankfully, I came across Tata Institute of Social Sciences where I uh, pursued my master's in public health. So uh, this course really helped me understand the, the social determinants of health. You know, uh, That is basically the different factors uh, which impact health apart from your routine uh, lifestyle like your economic climate these uh, so on and so forth so uh, having my pursued my master's in public health and i was also fortunate to uh, also do a summer public health course from university of minnesota all of this educational background helped me build my expertise in public health and that actually you know kick started my public health journey so uh, when I started my public health journey, I began working at the district level, uh, then I uh, deep dived into the state level and then eventually at the national level. Uh, while I was working in these different um, terrains, I was uh, engaged with different organizations, like I've worked in the government sector, non-government sector, worked with the CSR initiatives. So uh, having worked and having uh, you know had this experience of working with these uh, diverse uh, organizations also and even the diverse uh, people that I met during this whatever 10 plus years you know over a decade year of career in public health uh, another thing that I realized was it is not really uh, sufficient to reach out to people only with certain traditional mechanisms or processes in order to address their problems. Like traditionally, the government has set up the national programs which are being delivered through the different processes, uh, like the different systems that they have put in place. So there are uh, skilled individuals who are there in the community, there are hospital settings, all of the processes are there in place. But there is something still missing because of which people are not able to avail those services. People are not able to get the kind of health care that they really need to, you know. And uh, with that thought process in mind, during my public health career, I constantly try to get in touch with the different technology innovations that do exist in public health. Mm-hmm. So even in my career in public health, I've worked across in various digital technology interventions. I've worked with the national government also in order to build a certain web platforms, which is now called as the HMIS, which is a health management information system. 
basically it's a system where all the uh, the infrastructure which we call as the primary health care center the sub center the district hospitals all of them they enter the uh, the details regarding the patient and whatever you know xyz dynamics are there they enter the information and that information is then used for uh, generating certain analytics which is critical for evidence based decision making and interventions mm -hmm. so i've been strong believer throughout my public health career regarding utilization of technology platforms and analytics so as to reach out to as many individuals and to you know serve the purpose so in this quest and that's the reason why also i joined in uh, varvani ai which is the not for profit organization uh, working in ai technology innovations so it's been more than 3 years i'm working in this organization and uh, it's it's been a absolutely fantastic journey in terms of understanding how ai technology can uh, kind of boost the kind of interventions and the support that government is trying to you know build into the society so in short if we want to just understand that how is ai technology creating a dent or how is it uh, doing something different you know so uh, typically i give this example to my uh, frontline workers when i train them that ai technology is nothing very different you know it's very simple like let's try to understand it with the help of an analogy of uh, maybe the trains uh, that are functional in our country right in initially during the traditional uh, times we had steam engines right we had steam trains then it was replaced by electric trains and now we have the vande bharat express right so uh, we know like the, the different kinds of technology that have come in they have increased the efficiency of the transport system right so the steam uh, the engines which were there earlier which worked on the coal or the wood they could be probably compared to the traditional processes or the systems that we already have in place they are also important but mm -hmm. then it was created by the electric engines right which uh, which could be compared to the digital technology innovations that we have in place for example the different web platforms the applications which the frontline workers are using right now you know or the or the chos are using right now so there mm -hmm. are the technology innovations mm -hmm. and vande bharat could be compared to so vande bharat is what it's basically a technology innovations and you have multiple engines who have boosted the efficiency right mm -hmm. so it is something mm -hmm. which is which is bringing that boosting factor so ai technology could probably be compared to that kind of boosting factor which is going to help you or enable you to do your activities in a more better manner mm -hmm. you know if you again for a deep dive into this uh vande bharat ko bhi agar if we are you know utilizing the example of a train only so uh, the engine of a train could be compared to an ai uh, tool or an ai technology which is in the hands of the driver who is the human in the loop so typically in the ai technology what we do is the tool or the intervention does have a human in the loop human in the loop is basically a human expertise who is looking at the inferences uh, of the ai technology that are being provided so that the decision making that happens right it is based on the thematic expertise of the human individual as well as the complementary support provided by the ai tool right so yeah. that's how they gel well and that's how they are complementary to each other so yeah. coming back to the example of vande bharat you know if you compare the engine to the ai technology you compare the driver to the human in the loop the coaches of the train could be compared to the different interventions that the government of india or the state health systems they are defining and they have developed in order to provide uh, recommendation support or intervention support to the ai inference or to the problem statement that you are trying to address with the help of the train right so the pathway of the train the you know, the pathway of the train is laid by the government in terms of the different programs you know that the government has already laid down in order to address the different ncds maternal and child health issues the tuberculosis the different domains that are there uh, under the ambit of the national health mission the engine or the boosting support can be provided by the ai technology the driver could be the enabler he could be the human in the loop providing the human expertise and then you have the coaches which help Uh, kind of amalgamate these two efforts and help the train reach its destination so that's a simple example just to help you understand that how ai technology could be used and how it is critical in terms of you know reaching out to a larger beneficiaries in uh, case of public health i have not actually uh, spoke with someone who explained the role of ai so beautifully so thank you for that wonderful explanation uh, ai of expertise mainly lies in uh, child care as well as maternity health right if i'm um, not yes so can we uh, there are so many stigmas that already exist with regard to this particular area maternity as well as child care uh, organizations such as united nations unesco is uh, working with vibrant uh, uh, putting you know forward vibrant effort 
to overcome such stigmas can you as an expert who work in this field and uh, who have a very good idea about our india's indian situ situation economic as well as social situation can you explain the role of ai in overcoming the, the stigmas in this particular field so uh, what i would like to say is yes there are stigmas and rather than stigmas what i feel anjali uh, there is a lot of hesitance you know because uh, and probably what i have learned in uh, these uh, few years is that the hesitance is because of the lack of knowledge hmm. so if there is lack of knowledge then it is followed by hesitance and then it is followed by stigmatization and then it leads to kind of segregation of that particular part you know you try hmm. to avoid it you don't try to reach out to it you don't try to explore it but uh, i think the times are changing now and it is a matter of taking efforts towards uh, increasing the information capacity or the knowledge capacity of your stakeholders mm -hmm. like for example i tell you um, the different ai tools also that we are working on there have been situations where we have reached out to certain stakeholders and they have been very hesitant in adopting the ai technology uh there is no offense about being hesitant about utilizing Sorry, the technology so it is material hesitant uh, as in which uh, area are you speaking about i wasn't clear about that so area in uh, so it can be across any areas but it is about adoption of any new technology i'm talking about it can be health can be agriculture it can be anything but in terms of accepting any new technology as you mentioned in your earlier conversation that there are certain stigmas what i am uh, trying to mention is that the stigma is mostly originating because of the lack of information and if we try to build the capacity of our stakeholders by giving them adequate information about the technology about uh, what are the caveats of it so it's also very critical to understand what is the caveat of that and also understanding what kind of implications it is going to have on the society if that kind of clear picture is provided to the stakeholder i think the stigmatization could be slowly and eventually reduced so they have a strong role in that Right. exactly and it is stigmatization is a behavioral concept you know mm -hmm. so uh, and it differs from person to person mm -hmm. so what has been going on since a long time since a long duration that uh, becomes typically uh, uh, it becomes a statement you know which gets passed on from generation to generation but uh, eventually if we hold hands together to uh, decide to uh, inform our stakeholders and to increase their knowledge base i think that will be a uh, very critical so just mm -hmm. to give you some small example also so um, again um, see uh, with the government uh, folks also uh, there are certain stakeholders who are very uh, apprehensive about exploring technology but there are certain government stakeholders who are very pro also about adopting technology for example we are we have collaborated with the ministry of women and child development department and uh, <clears throat> women and child development department has played a very critical role in terms of uh, accepting new digital interventions and innovations uh, for their anganwadi workers okay. so uh, just for you and the audiences who are not aware so anganwadi workers are basically women uh, in the villages uh, there are these women are basically bestowed they have been given the responsibility of educating the children from 0 to 6 years and also providing them certain nutritional counseling right so this is the major major role of course there are many other things that they are responsible for and they are driving uh, many other initiatives but the primary goal is to support the pregnant women the adults and girls and basically it is directed towards children from 0 to 6 years in terms of helping them in education and also supporting them in terms of nutrition so the government has actually built in the system in a manner that anganwadi workers have been identified uh, they have been trained they have been provided with the infrastructure support right infrastructure support in terms of room is available uh, there is a good infrastructure where children come in uh, there are educational materials available over there government is supporting in terms of providing them nutritional supplements take home rations so that the children can get the nutrition that they require irrespective of the social economic status that they come from so mm -hmm. all of the children coming from the different um, diversity of the socio economic background they can come over there for everybody the services available are similar and they are provided by the anganwadi worker so that's the basic infrastructure support that the government has already provided to boost the impact or to amplify the impact they have also now provided it's been 2 3 years or more than that that they have provided the anganwadi workers with mobile phones they have provided the anganwadi workers with a digital platform where the anganwadi worker records the growth parameters of the children which is captured on a monthly basis mm -hmm. so that record is being captured in an application the application is uh, providing the growth chart for the children which helps the anganwadi worker understand whether the child is going in malnutrition or not whether the child is 
getting proper nourishment or not it also creates evidence for the public health administrators to uh, frame the interventions accordingly so basically what did the government do they gave them the infrastructure secondly they boosted it by giving a technology support in terms of the mobile phones and in terms of um, in terms of the digital support that they have in terms of the application and now we are working with mowcd to strengthen the portion tracker application so it's a application where the anganwadi fills her routine information regarding the child growth so we are now working with mowcd to increase the capacity of this portion tracker application by ai innovations Hmm. so one of the ai innovations that we are working on is now uh, predicting the anthropometric measurements of the child on the basis of a video captured by the anganwadi worker so typically anganwadi worker uses a weighing machine she uses a stadiometer so weighing machine is used for the weight stadiometer is used for measuring the height of the child and measuring tapes are used for measuring the head circumference chest circumference etc so these parameters are critical to monitor to understand the growth of the child right so it's actually cumbersome to maintain all of these things and it's also dependent on the skill of the anganwadi worker whether she's doing it in a proper manner or not and so on and so forth there are calibration issues x y z so there are certain challenges with respect to using these traditional methods so what wargani ai and like we are working with ministry is to develop a simple ai tool which will give or uh, which will give these parameters the weight the length head and chest circumference and the mid upper lung circumference on the basis of a small video 10 to 15 seconds almost 10 to 15 seconds video of the child will then be utilized to give these predictions right so this will what will this do this will help make the job of the anganwadi worker much more simpler she will have to let go of the uh, the difficulties and the challenges that are there in the traditional systems so this is a classic example how ministry of women and child development department is trying to boost and amplify the different kind of services and how it is trying to reach out to its beneficiaries in a more improvised manner by accepting technology innovations so mm-hmm. i mean i gave the example of government because typically we have this in mind that there is a stigma in the minds of stakeholders people are not very accepting but this is not a i would say a, a, a universal statement it varies from stakeholder to stakeholder and what is very critical is understanding the caveats of the technology solutions that you are building in making sure that they are a safe and secure platform which is totally possible there's not it's it's more about gaining the right information you know and making sure that you develop systems in a manner such that they are more user centric so mm-hmm. that you are pro- able to provide the services to your users in the best possible manner mm-hmm. so that's one example and uh, we are happy to share that such kind of technology has already been developed for 1.5 uh, months kids which is called as a shishu mapan application and uh, we are happy to uh, share it with our users uh the manand news union territory is already using it so it's it's a great journey it's just a matter of breaking that bubble of you know uh, stigma if it is there if not just educating and holding hands to inform your stakeholders is the key i think i completely agree with what you said about that uh, even india ai is working really hard to you know avoid that particular uh, hesitant to as uh, hesitance to accept a new technology uh, we have our ai for everyone booklet we have our uh, generative ai booklet that is that are introducing these disciplines in the most simplest form so that the pe- people can understand it better and uh, they will not be hesitant towards this particular technology so yeah uh, so let us for a moment uh, we we'll been speaking about how ai has been helping out uh, the women and children in our country uh, now let us speak about um, you know how uh, the, uh, about the participation of women in this particular field um, what opportunities does ai create for women in india to access health education awareness and resources so can you explain a bit about that Sure, sure, sure. So, uh, AI technology not only could be uh, utilized by uh, you know uh, for as a career perspective for women going forward, but uh, first I'd like to touch upon that uh, AI technology is also very critical in uh, boosting the confidence of the existing uh, women healthcare workforce. Like for example, uh, I mean, uh, let's talk about it in two parts, right? So first, I'll speak about how AI technology is uh, helping to boost the confidence and how it is helping to complement the existing services provided by the healthcare workforce. So, if you talk about a healthcare and the public healthcare infrastructure in India right now, the frontline healthcare workers, the FLWs that we call, there are three kinds of frontline workers uh, predominantly, uh, which is the ASHA workers, uh, then you have the Anganwadi workers, and then you have the auxiliary nurse midwife. 
all of these the three different cadres of uh, frontline workers they are working at the level of villages at the level of the blocks right so these are the pillars of the public healthcare system who are making sure that healthcare is being accessible to all the people in the community they are making sure that all the services the government is framing it is being accessible to all of them we are working closely towards developing ai solutions that can be utilized by all of these three different levels of cadres uh, which are women led uh, healthcare workforce like for example the ashas which are the accredited social health activists they are nothing but volunteers from the village who are driving the health agenda in the village across the different beneficiaries that they have the shishu map an application that i just spoke about which provides the inference regarding the anthropometric measurements of the child from 0 to 1.5 months on the basis of a small video taken on a basic smartphone this technology is being provided to the asha workers so that they can monitor newborns in the community through this ai tool right so they have the problem that they face is given the different diversity that we have in our country going from one place to the other is a challenge with all those instruments in hand so you can have the tool in your mobile application and then you go from house to house and you can take the measurements of the child that is one way how we are touching the ashas similarly we are working with auxiliary nurse midwives that is anms so anms are again providing basic services to the pregnant women particularly they also provide services to the children and the other beneficiaries but particularly to the pregnant women so we are working in collaboration with japaigo which is a uh, john hopkins university affiliate uh, towards developing an ai tool which helps in identifying the pregnant women who are prone to uh, missing their anc visits so basically identifying the anc adherents right so identifying those pregnant women who are most likely to not come for the upcoming anc visits now what is anc visit anc visit is basically pregnant uh, women whatever health checkup she does you know during her uh, pregnancy period that is the anc so helping the frontline care healthcare worker identify the high risk pregnancies on the basis of this ai tool this is again one of the ai tools we are developing for the anms and again uh the third is the anganwadi workers which we just spoke about a couple of minutes ago where we are supporting them with the help of mowc with a couple of ai solutions anthropometry being one of them we are helping her identify the growth faltering in children at an early stage based on predictive analytics so these are the different dynamics with the help of which we are able to empower women led frontline healthcare workforce across the country right so that is the service the service level uh, individuals you know in our country that's one part of it second part as you rightly mentioned ki how is ai technology very critical in terms of supporting the career of women i think it's very critical because in ai technological development it's very important to have a user centric approach and a gender based uh, you know the balanced approach right so if you have women uh, or rather why it's not really uh, I, i will not be really partial towards women what i would like to say is having a balance in the team who is working towards a technology is very critical because there are certain perspectives which the male members will be able to bring in there are certain perspectives which the female members will be able to bring in and ultimately the technology that you are developing is for all the genders right it is for all the beneficiaries which will have a mix of these that is why it is very important to have a team which involves these different kinds of layers mm-hmm. but typically in our organization also we have a ui ux team right we have a team of researchers who actually go in the field reach out to the users the beneficiary take inputs from them take suggestions from them so as to understand once this technology when it is developed how will it be better accommodated and adapted into the routine of the individuals who are intended to be the users of the technology right so it's very important that the user is kept in mind and for us the users are both the genders right so that's why i think it's very critical for women workforce to get into the technology development part also a because you will be able to bring in perspectives which are very critical in terms of the acceptance of the technology for all the users that we are intending to reach out to and b also because it also increases the diversity in the group and also increases the uh, the uh, the dynamics you know which are there in terms of thought processes and brainstorming which is required during the technology development so it's really critical that women workforce uh, participate in this technology development okay. thank you so much for that explanation but then you know when we are speaking about 
uh, women especially maternity health and all that we also need to talk about uh, mental health issues that women face at least in the urban urban communities these days they are open to speak about issues such as postpartum depression and all that but i don't know how far it is you know people are ready to talk about or how far they are aware about in rural india so can how can we use uh, um, ai solutions to you know tackle such issues what is your statement on that right 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 in fact uh, very rightly pointed out postpartum depression we call it as uh, postpartum depression so basically it's a very uh, uh, commonly observed phenomenon right now uh, in today's world and uh, we are working with uh, certain thematic area experts to understand how we can leverage ai technology to support the current efforts that the government is making in terms of uh, reaching out to women who are facing such kind of issues right so technology has advanced to a stage where uh, based on the voice recordings of an individual we are able to get a fair sense about the kind of mental status of that individual right for example um, if a person is in depression typically uh, the the sound of the individual could be analyzed to identify if any kind of patterns could be observed and that could be uh, there are to utilize for screening individuals who could be facing such kind of issues so this is certainly one of the areas uh, where even our organization is trying to uh, explore how ai technology could be utilized it's uh, not just limited to the uh, the the voice recording analysis of the individuals uh, to identify and to screen if they are facing such kind of issues uh, but it, it it also depends upon uh, it could also be utilized in a way where certain questionnaire information could be uh, analyzed to understand whether the likelihood of a person being mentally uh, you know disturbed is there or not so this is definitely possible and across the globe there have been certain you know, studies already done and certain ai technologies already have been used in this area uh, wherein uh, the results have been quite encouraging so postpartum depression and similar other mental health issues is certainly an area where ai technology could be leveraged a to screen the individuals b the second part of it is um, treating and counseling these patients so there are two parts to it uh, you must have heard about different chatbots who uh, engage into certain conversations uh, with a lot of empathy with the individuals so as to understand uh, what the individual is uh, really facing through and uh, to understand uh, what is so, so individuals are typically very comfortable in talking to machines rather than uh, human beings we have uh, a lot of studies have also revealed this mainly the reason being they are not afraid of being judged in that case right so when you're speaking to a machine you're opening up in front of a machine i mean by machine i mean we are talking on a chatbot right which is asking you ki are you facing these symptoms how are you feeling today uh, do you feel like uh, you know uh, crying uh, all the time or whatever so scientifically proven questions when asked to them which leads to an answer which helps us understand whether the individual is facing certain kind of mental condition is something that is worth exploring and it has already been explored across the globe so ai technology can be used in certain niche areas also mental health being one of the critical areas yeah um uh, thank you so much for that uh, explanation uh, uh, speaking about how can we uh you know as a concluding statement can you explain how can we uh, inspire more young girls uh you know to what uh, to to uh, you know take over the field of stem and build a career in ai and work for the you know upliftment of our community how can we inspire them what are the means that you suggest what is your what are your words of wisdom to them uh so what i would like to suggest is that there is definitely helping them understand that there is a need of participation of women in this development technology you know that's very critical and why is it important is something that needs to be conveyed to the different uh, workforce that we have right now so for all the women out there it's very important to understand that how you will be able to make a difference by participating in this journey of development of the ai technology which is of course a booming field right now so we all know that uh, it's something which which nobody can you know miss out on uh, the penetration of mobile phones is certainly an example which helps us understand that how technology has the power to reach out to almost all those also who have not been touched since long ages 
and uh, the very critical part over here is not to look at it like an alien technology it's something which is almost do it's it's something which can be explored for example i'll tell you in ayurveda there's a concept called so ayurveda is our ancient uh, medicine technology right it's our ancient medicine in ayurveda there is a uh, there is a methodology called as nadi parikshan so nadi parikshan is basically what uh, it's basically observing the patterns of your pulse to understand whether the person has a typical ailment uh, to understand the prakruti of a particular individual right so what is happening over there is you are using the predictive analytics of human intelligence to understand what the ailment of the individual lives over there again in nadi parikshan you need to have experience expertise and training similarly this is the kind of approach that we are using in ai technology also you are doing predictive analyst analytics on the basis of certain patterns which are being identified by the machine in this case right so the approach is almost equivalent is i mean that's uh, that's an anecdotal analogy i would say but the approach is something which has been vetted by our ancestors also and again like in nadi parikshan you require experience and expertise <coughs> in ai technology development also you require experience and expertise it is nothing uh, like a rocket science in fact rocket science is also not a rocket science i mean that is something that we all should you know accept it and uh, we should be open minded towards exploring such kind of technologies and one message that i would like to give to all my all our viewers is that don't be apprehensive about exploring new pathways you should be always open uh, approach it with an open mind technology is definitely a booming field and there's nothing in you that limits you to reach out and understand and develop your skills for it so please go out for it thank you so much doctor for all this wonderful conversation uh, you know it was a very insightful discussion and i'm sure that the audience will also en enjoy it. learning uh, many of the points that you shared were uh, learnings for me uh, i'm sure it was the same for the you know uh, women and children who are trying to build a career in ai as well so thank you so much uh, and it was amazing to speak to you